Good evening, everyone. I'd like to Not welcome ready. you to the regular scheduled council meeting for Not January ready. 21st, 2020, 7 p.m. Burner, good evening. Oh. <laughs> Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilwoman Hopkins. Here. Councilman Grimm. Here. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. <clears throat> Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be by Vice Mayor Cook. If you'll please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we again come before you asking for guidance as we do the business for this city. Again, please take and bless our first responders, our sheriff's deputies, our administration, and particularly the people that are preserving our peace across this globe. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right, well, action on the uh, minutes for the work session on January 6, 2020. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. Council, any discussion before the vote? When you're ready, please. Okay. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? We weren't really here for that, so I abstain. That is great. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> good, good. Uh, yeah. Would you like? Because you were here, though. Oh, for the work. Uh, she wasn't here for the work session. Oh, you weren't here for the work session either. Okay. Was your first up Okay, so I have. Okay. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. All right, so I've got one, two, four, zero, three. Accepted. What do you have? Um, I have four yeses, four, zero, three. Four, three abstains. Four A's. Oh, you got three abstains. Correct. Oh, because okay, that's, that's where I'm on. Sorry. Right. And then a motion to accept the minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting on January 6, 2020. First, it, second? Sure, we'll Cobb first and second. Yes. Okay. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Now I can say yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Councilwoman Nowakowski. <laughs> Minutes accepted 7 0. Thank you. All right. Communications, none tonight. Mr. Bridge, the floor is yours again, sir. Awesome. Let me get to that section of my packet here. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, for the city manager report, we will start off with our finance report and Ms. Debbie Watkins with our finance director. Good evening, council and members of um, the city residents. Um, the, the council financial report summary for December 2019. Uh, the total revenue for the general fund in December was $781,735.59. December's total expenses were $147,005.58. Our income tax withholding account uh, revenue for December was $112,707.44. Year to date total revenue collected for the year is $7,336,918.27. And year to date total expenses is $5,661,817.44. Um, these numbers are the end of December. They're not the final year end numbers yet until I close out the year and do some more um, moving of numbers and things that I have to do. So. Um, Hopefully by the next uh, next month, we'll, well, the next meeting, I should have every, you know some final year-end numbers for you. 
uh, to look at. And I did give you a new statement of cash from revenue just to show what I had done here was after I had given the report um, to be sent to you, I went ahead and moved all the money, if you look on the second page, from the income tax holding account into the prospective accounts that it needed to be put into. So it went into 101, the general fund for the income tax, and then it went into the police for income tax. So those figures changed a little bit there. So, um, and I think Randy wants to um, uh, kind of brag about the numbers a little bit. <laughs> Just a little. Um, <laughs> Council, I uh, hopefully you guys are paying attention to that highlighted number. Um, it's been five years since we put that police levy on. Um, we'll go into more about this later. Um, my goal is, you know, is you, we had to watch our finances for five years. We really did. Um, and we took that to heart, your administration did. Uh, even though we still paved three roads and had massive upgrades with that, we still upgraded our parks. I am very happy to report um, that it is a very high indication that we will actually end this year, the year that I projected us to end with a million dollars surplus in our general fund. When you look at that highlighted number right now, it says $1,135,000. Ms. Watson still has to do some final transfers, but we are, I talked to Ms. Watson about this today. It's not gonna be $135,000 worth of transfers. So our general fund more than likely will end up with a million at the end of this year. And that is a huge accomplishment for this city. Uh, so current council members, we thank you. Past council members, we thank you. Administration, I thank you. That's a lot of hard work, but we have hit our goal. And that for me is, very, is a very proud moment. Mr. Can I say something, Mr. Bridge? And please don't take this the wrong way, either one of you. I hate the word surplus. I get what I, I know exactly what you're saying, and that I mean that's a phenomenal number. So good mm -hmm. job to everybody. I just hate it. I just hate that word because to me it sounds like everything's been fixed. Carryover balance. I know. I'm just saying. But uh, with that being said, and and we've talked about this before, that you know even though that sounds like a lot of money, and it is, but a town for this size should still probably have what five six million dollars in that account at the end of the year, so, uh, but we're still definitely moving in the right direction. So mm -hmm. again, awesome job to everyone. I mean, in five years we had, when I took over $2,000 or whatever yeah, it was. I remember the article. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, this is I a lot. This a is a council meeting when a city manager said, we will end the year with $195. That's bad. And yeah. jaws on, around this table, hit the, hit the table. Yeah. Well, uh, we're now we're up to over a million. It's an amazing turnaround, thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. We're proud of it. You should be. We should be. Uh, everyone we should be. All. Citizens should be. Everyone should be. So that's all I wanted to say. I did want to gloat about that. Because that's uh, a big accomplishment for us. That's all. Thank you, Ms. Watson. Are you done? I'm sorry. Are we done with the Yeah, finance? I'm done unless you have any other questions for me <laughs> at this moment. We've got to set Sorry. Thank you, Ms. Watson. Excellent job as always. Thank you. And moving on with the city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of the public. Uh, we will be getting uh, to get on those road repairs here soon uh, under the service department. 2019 wastewater plant influent building upgrade. We are substantially complete. The bar screen and the two pumps, uh, all brand new, are in. They are in operation. We're still doing some minor tweaks. Uh, we are about to send the final payment off to the contractor, and then uh, we will start uh, getting ready to close the loan and start our first payment on that um, three years, four years, I can't really remember off the top of my head, uh, starting in 2021. Uh, just to give you an update, a hair on that, the bar screen has uh, surprised us to what we thought the salesman said what we see at Clark, at Clark County Regional, they have the same one. To see how much this stuff pulls out of the water before it hits any equipment in the wastewater plant is phenomenal. Um, I always hand out flyers usually at the town hall meeting about not putting the flushable wipes that aren't flushable. Um, anything like that, towels, uh, rods, tree limbs, I mean things get down in a sewer system. Um, the other day I was sitting there not, oh, this was a couple weeks ago, actually watching the screen. There are children's toys getting caught in this screen that you're wondering how they got there. So obviously kids flush them down the toilets. So it's catching all this stuff that 
the screen was not catching. With this being an operation two, the way it works, it is now catching grit. We're talking very, very fine particles that eventually can sand away at a pump. It is catching that stuff too. And then with our new pumps, we are actually um, running these pumps at such a, uh, like probably below 50% of their capacity to where our other pumps were well over 60 to meet minimum suction. So we are now having to make uh, adjustments to our plant because right now what's happening is we're surging it with wastewater, it's treating it and it dies out. And then we're surging it because the pumps uh, they do it so fast. So we need a, a steady flow. So we got some minor work to do with it. Uh, but it is uh, phenomenal on what this, uh, when you take care of things at the head of the plant, how much more it'll save for the rest of the equipment down the plant. So I, I, I really appreciate everyone getting together. It, would, it took a little bit uh, long to get through the process of engineering, getting the funds, you know, discussing the loans, the finances. But in the end, you know, these uh, 80 to $100,000 pumps will last much longer that we have this equipment in. Um, and also, it also has that compactor in it, so the, the, they're hands off completely from all those screenings that go into an auger, an auger compacts that, watched it the other day, come out the chute, and it just like, looks like compressed, a uh, bunch of shredded stuff, it's, but it's all compact. So it goes straight to the dumpster, we don't really have to touch anything. So it's really helped us a lot on condensing and uh, making life easy with that. Uh, moving on to the clarifier project, we just sent the second payment, which is for them to start on build. Um, that build, we're hopefully get this in sometime in probably March is the, uh, their estimated time frame. We will do our next payment upon uh, equipment arrival. That will be the big chunk. Uh, and then we'll get that clarifier up and running. Uh, 2020 road project estimating. Um, Mr. Bridge will go over in his informational items on one of the the next roads it would be for CDBG, that was one estimating. Um, I will be getting with the engineer as I always do that is very familiar with our city and start looking at our uh, street levy funds that we are anticipating to get in normally and then what we could potentially get in with the gas tax. We don't know what that is yet, but we're, we'll be looking at the, the Langdales, the Hamilton on this side of the section. Uh, the CDBG is looking at the Northwoods. As always, they qualify, but put, trying to put most of the street levy funds and maybe anything additional comes in to work on those streets over here that need that immediate attention. Um, and then moving on, traffic signal upgrade. There's really no um, update other than we're just approving uh, various engineering things on poles, mass, things like that. But that's still on track right now to be completed before the festival next year. And that is all I have on the, the sheet that was handed out. I can entertain any questions on that or anything else that's uh, been going on. Council, any questions for Mr. Kicko? Okay, I just had a couple, Howie, if you don't mind. Um, so you, you have, I don't want you to name names because you probably don't have it ironed out yet, but you, you, I'm assuming you have a few streets in mind you would like to get on this year. Um, as far as well, CDBG, we got a quote for Fenwick. It's right. just going right next in line. Keep on going. Right. But um, I'm about over the, here, overlays. yeah, yeah, overlays. Um, I had looked at, I think Langdale as being probably one of the ones I needed to hit, and a portion of Hamilton uh, this winter so far. I don't know what it's going to do to us, so we're going to try to get out this spring and just see uh, what's the best way um, to get it. But it's going to be outside of anything changing, we'll probably be in the Edgebrook area <coughs> is where we'll, we'll focus our attention. Okay, great, thank you. Um, another thing street related, we should, I've talked to you about this before, street sweeping. We do that once a year and it's, is it in the spring or the fall? Currently it's in the uh, fall. And it's around 5,000 or so to do it, give or take? Yeah, this one was 5,000, but I think it might go up next year because yeah, the company wasn't, I mean, yeah. wasn't that great, so we might go back to the one that we had used before, and they're about 800 to to 1,000 more. Do you think maybe next year it would be beneficial to budget to do it twice, you know, one right after winter to get all the salt and rocks up, and then one? I, I'd love to do twice. It always comes down to the, 
uh, street uh, fund, and right. obviously this gas right. tax can be yeah. used for that. Yeah. That'll be a big boost. But yes, two would definitely be that would help our. I mean, because that's not a huge cost. It's not like it takes a hundred thousand dollars to do it. I mean, five grand. I mean, it's a little chunk of change, but it's not out of reach. But we are jetting some more storm sewers now than we have before. Okay. So that debris is catching up with us, leaves, all that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Prior to that gas tax, I mean, it was tough. I mean, that line item was slim, yeah. year in and year out. But I mean, you look at it now; it's already showing great i mean great increases from last year because of that gas tax so now's now's the time to do it yeah okay and then one more i apologize when the street uh signals get up when the traffic signals get updated say they're on some of the corners there at 571 of maine will that cause a problem for the businesses there in that area there will be some short-term uh, headaches there will be no road closures but there could be a lane shift uh, certain things like that the the main road construction portion is a couple of those catch basins that are in that corner mm -hmm. we're replacing those while they're in there okay so they they're not collapsed right now but we're going to get them anyway those will be in the road work and then um a lot of it should be off except unless they're directional drilling under but most of the headache will come when they're redoing all the um ADA aprons those are all going to get redone again will they close the sidewalks completely well there will have to be because in the corners because when they redo the ADA ramps they will be closed okay all right, thank you. That's all I had. Appreciate it. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. Moving on to city manager report, our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trustee. Mayor, Vice Mayor and Council and Citizens. For the month of December, the new Carlisle Fire Division responded to 81 EMS calls in the city, 10 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 14 fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. Uh, give us an end of the year of 1,209 runs in the city and 191 runs in Elizabeth Township. Uh, in December, we had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either by Pike or Bethel Clark, due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township and we answered two mutual aid calls for Bethel Clark as far as EMS. In the month of December, the division uh, responded to two overdose calls. Other than that, at the end of the year, we're Starting our new year, starting things out, waiting for the new medic. Right now, it's still in their planning stages. They spend more time planning and drawing than they do actually building the medic. That keeps, they make sure it's built right. Okay. Council, any questions for Chief? How's uh, the engines and everything? How's the fire trucks? Engine's good for its age. It's good. Uh, the ladder truck is. Uh, fine. We put, did some ma maintenance into that this year. Uh, new front brakes, which was almost three thousand dollars for front brakes. Uh, one of the cylinders for the actual large bed ladder um, had a leak, and we had that replaced, and that was twenty-two hundred dollars. So. And the uh, I forget the proper name for it. I apologize. The, the, the cot that goes up and down. Power. Power cot. Okay. Well, there you go. It's doing good. Uh, the power cot and the medic, yeah, it's, it's good, but the it'll go to the reserve medic when the new medic comes in. We'll be purchasing a new power cot to match the new load system for the new medic because it has to have that power power cot for that load system. Okay, great. All right, well, thank you very much. Council, any other questions for Chief? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you, Chief Trustee. Moving on to city manager report. Our, uh, our, our police report with Deputy Major Sack. <coughs> Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, members of the public, thank you. Uh, Sergeant Underwood would like for me to share that we had had for December of 2019 the report 31 calls for service for deputies, seven of which were domestics, two thefts, uh, one non injury crash, one crash with injuries. Uh, 10 citations for the month, a drug complaint, one, and uh, two attempted suicides. Um, the citations are up for the month of December. After our, after our conversation, we talked about that, we raised those up. Uh, set in some more prominent places of people speeding and was able to, to, to hit some of those uh, hotter spots there. Um, we are uh, working around the clock with our with our drug issues that we do have here in the city. We're, we're trying to keep up with them. Uh, we did just have a double overdose just before we come here. Uh, that's where the chief and I both come from just prior to walking into the door here uh, on Kennison. Um, so 
unfortunately, uh, that happened, although they, uh, they did survive, thanks to the um, fire and EMS. Uh, hats off to the chief uh, for that. We, um, we, I wanted you to know that three juveniles were arrested this past week for breaking into cars. And Deputy Beisline, our third shift deputy, caught and arrested those people. She's seen them out. She, she put two and two together, realized what was going on, and uh, was able to make those apprehensions and, and, and out file those charges. So I think that that's part of the issue that we had with these uh, juveniles uh, that were going around here, and they were uh, Tecumseh students. However, they're, they're being dealt with accordingly, and, and that's where we're at with our police report for this month. You said three were arrested on what night? Uh, I don't know the exact night, but it's just this past week. There was three that were charged, arrested and charged for, for that. I know that um, uh, the school resource officer, Deputy Loney, has also been advised and aware of that and knows who they are as well. Okay, great. Yeah. Council, any questions? You may Thank you very much, sir, for the report and the good news, or if you will. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Major Sack. And moving on with the city manager report uh, under informational <laughs> items, new building update. I'm expecting a, an updated timeline soon. I actually spoke with the architect late last week. He is still waiting on the estimates. Uh, he is supposed to be getting me an updated Gantt chart here, uh, here in the next few days. As soon as I have that, I will pass it along. I did uh, kindly uh, uh, ask him to speed up the process. Um, so hopefully we'll have some movement on that here soon. But again, we are still waiting on those estimates from uh, a particular company. Uh, 2020 operating budget, uh, same as seeing as Melanin for the past few weeks. We are looking to adopt on 3920 or 32320. Of course, we're aiming for that meeting uh, on the 9th. Uh, work session should begin here very, very soon. I know we talked about the council meet and greet work session, but um, someone who had really nothing to do with the event, I wanted just to come see how it went. I will say that it was a fantastic event. And to everyone up there who put your time and effort to show up, I thank you. I even talked to some citizens who said this was absolutely beneficial. I know I had a good conversation with Ms. Hoffman about city things. And, you know, we got, even I got some things to be able to take back to work and learn from. So uh, keep it up. I mean, whatever we can do to facilitate that happening for you guys, just let us know. But again, I just thought it was a great way to start off the new year. And I, I thank you guys for taking part of that. Uh, 2020, 2020 and 2021 Community Development Block Grants, that is what we call the CD, CDBG grant. Uh, I did attend a, a required meeting on the 14th of January, and you have to attend that first initial meeting to even be considered for any grant money. So we did, and we, we did is uh, Mr. Kiko was working with Choice One Engineering, uh, and I went on behalf of Mr. Kiko because he was out ill, but uh, attached we have the Fenwick Reconstruction ex Estimates. Uh, so you see that total amount there is $354,415. Um, if you've heard us talk about, well, namely Mr. Kiko in the years past, about us getting awarded critical infrastructure, we will have to be awarded for that for this project to go through. The whole uh, county uh, only has $200,000 worth of funds to give out, but that's where the additional money from the critical infrastructure come into play. So hopefully we go ahead and get approved for that critical infrastructure like we've had in years past. If we do, and if we do get uh, the money that we awarded from the county, Hopefully this project can go through. Of course, as is always, there's about a 10% match that goes along with that. So uh, me or myself or Mr. Kiko will definitely keep you posted about the progress of that. Parks and Rec Board, they'll actually meet on the 23rd of, um, of this year. So actually, I think it's just here Thursday and the 28th of this month. Um, we're just gonna, the first one is just to go over where they, uh, with me, where they, um, what they wanna do. We're gonna go over their, uh, their bylaws and make sure everyone understands them completely. And the 28th, that's the one where they're going and I guess talk about what they're gonna do. Both of those meetings have been, uh, will be legally published. I do believe the, they come out tomorrow. Uh, but both of the meetings are at one o'clock here at the Shelter House. If you have some free time, please stop in and say hi to the new Parks and Rec Board. Fifth Deputy, happy to report <clears throat> the Sheriff has posted the position. Uh, that, the, that deputy will possibly need to be trained. So if someone that is not already, already, on the, already on the road crew wants to come on, they have to go through training. Um, as soon as that is done and they are on schedule here, I will definitely inform council. Uh, but that will definitely fill up some holes on the current schedule that we have by adding that fifth deputy. Um, and again, they also <clears throat> have been made aware that we will be getting the car from them on a yearly basis. So Ben, who I work with at the county, will be uh, starting that as well. 
Um, but as soon as that deputy is done training, and they're definitely on our streets, I will definitely update council. But thank you to the citizens for passing the study <coughs> again, because that's the one that really says, hey, we, we need that extra deputy, and we're going to use your tax dollars efficiently. Uh, new water bills. Um, I had attached this little sheet right here, and it's a quote from our current software company. We use SSI. And I was not aware of this. Probably, I think at the last meeting of the meeting before that, I did counsel a financial breakdown of what it's going to cost to transition into the new utility bills. Um, that was not included. So unfortunately, there is a one-time fee of $2,800, and that is to get our current software program to be able to be compatible with the company that we're using to print and mail them out. Um, so take that. I, I am taking that into consideration. Still probably going to go ahead and sign that contract despite this one-time fee because it is just a one-time fee because I still believe the cost-benefit analysis definitely outweighs the upfront cost we have to do. And that is a completely revamped utility bill. Um, but I did want to be transparent as always with council and say, hey, this did come. I wanted to bring it to your attention, but I will probably let you know that I'll probably still go ahead and uh, do the contract to get the new water bills. I have one more thing, and it's not on the city manager report. I do it. Uh, we have a deadline every year, every other year. I think it's every year. Yeah, it's every year. Um, the Volunteer Firefighters Dependent Fund Board, we have to uh, have two members from each legislative authority onto that. I think years past it was um, Mr. <coughs> Lindsay and someone else. But I need the council to appoint amongst yourself two people to be on this uh, dependent fund board. I don't, you'll more than likely never have to do anything with that board, uh, but it is a formality and is required by the state to go ahead and put you guys on it. So I need two volunteers. <coughs> I know Mr. Cobb would probably be a good one. Mr. Mr. Cobb and Ms. Eggleston. You guys got a motion to vote that? Thank you. Someone want to do the motion for them? How much? So move. So move. <laughs> Second. Second. There we go. We got Eagleson and Mr. Cobb. Mm -hmm. That is all I have for the city manager report. Be happy to entertain any questions. You need to vote on it. Yeah, we're gonna do the vote for this. And so, okay. so oh, the way I'm writing it is, um, Councilwoman Hopkins motioned for Councilman Cobb. Councilwoman Eggleston to be a part of the Volunteer Firefighters Dependent Fund with a second by Councilman Graham. <laughs> yes, Correct. sound good? Yes. Sound All good. right. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Graham? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bridge, I just have one question for you. Um, yes. Once the contract on this is signed, what kind of timeline are we looking before the citizens see these new water bills? Um, actually, it's a good, good, very good question. Um, we are writing the contract now for that to take. Right now it says March, but Kathy, our utility clerk, wants to change that to February with how they're doing. So the February bill will actually come out in March. Okay. Um, that is, and if that changes, I'll let you know. Right. They have to design it, do a template, and all this stuff. So um, if, it, if it can be done sooner than that, We'll let you know, um, but we haven't even executed the agreement yet, so we'll say probably March. And just to clarify that everyone is aware that with the new water bill, you can still pay it the same way you have mm -hmm. at the city building or online through our website, correct? Yes. All right. Mr. Cobb. I have a couple of questions for you, Mr. Bridge. Okay. Along with this water bill, can we put a flyer in there with it? Yeah. And we can put the announcement of the council meeting, the dates? We have we have the opportunity. We'll have to pay a little extra. I think it's two or three cents. But we can anytime that we want to take like a eight and a half informational flyer. So like I plan on instead of going out and hire a company to do like a newsletter, I can just do every three months or every two months or whatever it takes. Design a newsletter here. We can have council upcoming council dates, whatever you guys want me to put on it. Yeah, and then they take that and they put it right in the bill. I mean that'll help inform the Absolutely, too. sure. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. We can and also the other question. How's the fifth deputy going to work into the process, of this, you know, duty-wise? Um, right now, it is. They'll have. I mean, I'll, I'll say it. Um, Mon. It's it's 11 a.m. to 11 a to 7 p. shift, with Fridays and Saturdays off. Because what's that going to do? We have. We got some coverage issues on certain days of the week. 
but we don't have coverage issues on other days of the week. So that's really going to fill in the gaps of where we have the less coverage. Is that? Yeah. Sir, sir, you're saying weekend off, we will still have coverage on the Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's what I'm yeah, about. yep, yep, all that's still covered. It's going to go into a spot, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll give you the police schedule, so I'll share it with you. Um, but we don't like to put that out so everyone sees it clearly. No, um, I yes, but it is, it's doing a much needed bill, uh, fill in some void in the areas. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Well, Mr. Graham, and then we'll put you in this. Um, I've been attending the Bethel Township trustee meetings, and several times a year they have proactive enforcement splits. Um, Don Minton told me that the city used to work with the township on that, but hasn't in the past several years. They pay about $1,200 for five deputies for a certain amount of time. I would like to spend $1,200 whenever they do the blitzes to get either more deputies or an extended period of time because the township and the city are so closely interconnected. What affects, what happens the township affects the city, what happens the city affects the township. What do you guys think? I agree. I uh, had a conversation with him actually not long ago and I was just, I'm glad you brought it up because I did totally slipped my mind. So, but yes, I agree with you. 110%. I think they're very beneficial. Can I say something? Mm, what is a blitz? They have extra deputies. The state patrol comes in at no cost to assist. Um, they watch for, actively watch for drunk drivers. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's like drugs. a concentrated mm -hmm. effort. Yes. With fantastic results. It always gets okay. good results. Yeah, I mean, they may pull someone over. I mean, they'll be extra, you know, on, you know, they'll be really after you. If you got taillight, they're going to pull you over with the hopes that maybe we'll get, you know, someone that's got a, you know, kilo on a cover. Just exactly. Like the, just like the state highway patrol does for those DWI, what are those called? The check variety checkpoints. Checkpoints. Yeah, yeah. Variety checkpoints. So it'd be something like that, but a little more intense. Right. Okay. Throughout a wider area, too. Okay then I would move that we authorize the city manager to work with Bethel Township and contribute a similar amount for each um, That is a definitely a day-to-day -day operation, uh, but I will be happy to report me and Mr. Minton already had that conversation maybe three weeks ago right here in this building, and I told him to send me the information when he wants to do it. I have no problem helping to pay for that, none whatsoever, none. And as to why the city ever stopped, I don't know, because they have never approached me to partner with them up until that time. Yeah. And this was literally like, well, I think it was here the same day he probably yeah. talked to you about it. Yeah, it was at the top. And I said, yeah, I mean, anything to do, because here's the thing. Say if it, if it slips through the cracks down there, you know where they're coming? They're coming here. Yeah. I mean, if it gets through Bethel Township, down in that Park Lane area, they're probably coming to New Carlisle. Or they're coming through New Carlisle to get up north, you know? Yeah. It's not like they do it and they don't show results. They, they take some things off the street yeah. then I can have Don get a hold of you I told him to get a hold of me multi yeah, about it so I'm just I've been waiting on for him to get me the information of when he wants to do it but I told him I'd be in full support with him cool okay. mm -hmm. thank you mr. Graham Sam? Um, I was gonna ask if we can like regularly list all of the committee meetings as well when they're meeting so that people can go to those meetings as well. I think you put up a lot of them up on the whiteboard and sit. You mean like at the city building or something? When no, when he puts when he sends his little newsletter thing oh. in the so it goes into everybody's house and they see that all these committees are meeting. Well, I, I encourage like I encourage the Parks and Rec board. I mean, when I was talking to Mrs. Wright about it, I mean, when you have these committees, it's so beneficial to have this the meeting on the same day every month. If you're meeting monthly, you might as well have it right. on the. I don't know, second Tuesday of each month. That way, one, it's easier to legal advertise. We can do one swipe for the legal advertising instead of doing 12 different ones. You know, and then two, you know, it just makes it a lot easier because when you have this board, this board, that board, that board, and they all meet at these weird different times, and, you know, say it, it, the Parks and Rec Board, they meet on a Tuesday this month, but next month they meet on a Wednesday. It's just, it's hard to track. But I have, I have no problem putting that stuff on there. 
but we have the whiteboard we put it on and you know and the Facebook page is going to get a lot more activity to it this year once we get done talking by the end of the night so I think there's definitely rooms that we can put whatever you guys wish on there as far as information based for city only can I ask that bring up something unrelated uh, I don't know how many of you have looked through our codified ordinances. Linda, let me stop you for a minute. Sure. I don't mind bringing it up. You might save it for other business. Okay. Just make a note and we'll, we'll hit oh, it there. I thought you were kind of finishing up. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so you were done with the city manager's report, correct, sir? I'm sorry. You were done with the your, I am, yes. Right. Okay, so comments from the members of the public. Anybody has any questions or comments, please go to the podium. Five minutes. You can. All right, thank you very much. Moving on. Committee reports, not tonight. Resolutions. Ms. Burner. All right, we have one with action this evening. Resolution 20 01 R, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution adopting rules of council. Council? Bob and Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Mayor. Sir. On page six, the second paragraph, it says a motion to adjourn shall be in order at any time with a second. That in the past has been used to, to stifle oh. dissenting voices. Correct. And you, sir, were that dissenting voice. The paragraph before, it says the motion to adjourn and motion to previous questions shall be put to a vote without debate. I would like to see it, the second paragraph read, a motion to adjourn shall be in order at any time with the second and a majority vote. That way we know all of council agrees, yes, we're done. Uh, now I know I don't. I don't think you would do anything like that. Right. But no, I, no. I know. I each time, each the time they they can. Can. Uh, put uh, rules of council before council, they just copy the previous year. Am I correct, Ms. Berner? Say that again. I was trying to. This is just a rehash of the previous rules of council, correct? Correct. It's exactly the same. Right. So that way, it will continue on year after year after year until someone decides to change so we could um, could we make a motion to, ch to change that wording and then vote on it after make that an amendment amend to, i would move that we amend paragraph two of section six to read a motion to adjourn shall be in order at any time with a second and a majority vote i'll second it let her write it down i do have to run these through our law department once you're all done so just give that a heads up. Okay. Can you repeat that one more time, just so I? Just add, take out the period, and and a second, or and a majority vote. Okay. Let me write that six. down. That was page six, right, Mr. Grimm? Six. Page, six. Page, page six. page six. Page six. Paragraph two. Motion to adjourn the second paragraph. At any time with a second vote and majority. And you were the first, and Ms. Bison? Ms. Eggleston was second. Ms. Eggleston, okay. And majority. I figured I'll watch the video and <laughs> yeah, you came in. You get I'll, get it, I'll get it, but I'll get it then. All right. Okay, Before we vote on just council have any discussion on that? No. Okay. You're ready. We're all good? Yep. All right. Um, Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? <coughs> I have a whole question here. You've got to go to the law director. You can't really vote on that. Yeah, you can. You said you. I just want to make sure the majority at the end of it's fine. I'm sure it will be. We just anytime we make changes, we clearly got to send it to him. But I can't send it until after know what your changes are. Okay. Um, Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. All right. And that motion is accepted. Seven zero. Seven zero. Who was the first on that? Um, Grim. Okay. Second was Eggleston. Thank you. <clears throat> Well, that was just for the change, correct? That was right. just for okay. 
the change. The change. And now to accept the will we the, the resolution. Now we'll need one for the resolution. Okay. Which we already had the original okay. second. Do we the vote on it before called? it goes to law or yeah, after? We'll yes. We'll vote on it. You can vote on it. So I have Cobb as the first Correct. accepting the rules of council with a second with Eggles. Correct. Eggles. Yes. Okay. And, and then we started the discussion and that was before they vote on the final resolution. Yeah. I have another change to make then. Um, section six meeting procedure item three. I motion to amend the rules to delete the invocation from the agenda. To remove the invocation from the agenda. Or, the order of business. Yeah, I, I don't need to see it. I know what she's talking about. So to remove, to remove, basically she's wanting to remove the invocation from the agenda of every council. Does that mean the prayer? Correct. I'm against that. I would second it. Council, have any discussion on this before we vote? I, I will speak to this. Okay. Okay. I attend church at least three times a week. I'm active in church. I'm religious. I say prayers. But the prayers that are the prayers that are offered in the invocation at this meeting are Christian prayers, and not everyone is Christian. If, if you want to say something that is not secular or not partisan identified, I don't have a problem with that. But as it stands, I don't think it belongs in the council meeting. Um. I had asked a question actually on this, and this has been brought up to me a couple of times that some people in the audience think that the prayer is out of place at a council meeting. Does anybody know? I'm just curious, maybe you know, Dale, because you've probably been to a couple of them. Uh, county commissioner meetings, do they do a prayer? You know? I've not. I've only been to mm -hmm. one county commissioner. They don't? No, they, I mean, our country was founded on a separation of church and state. And when you bring the invocation into your government right. meeting, right. you have now brought the church into your state affairs. So there is a big push. A lot of people, and it's been historically going on, they're taking this part of that out of it. It doesn't mean, you know, it, but Ms. Eggleston nailed it correctly. That is a Christian prayer. Mm -hmm. Not all of your citizens go down that road. Right. Not all of your citizens are Christian. Some of them could be Buddhist. I mean, some of them could be this, that, and this. So it's either you... I, it's a very t hated topic. I'm just that, that's what it is, but it is not uncommon for government agencies not to do the invocation. They'll continue on doing the pledge, of course. Right. But it kind of goes back to how our country was founded. But it's a hot topic. I'm out. Yeah. I'm I know out. Bethel, Bethel, Township, <laughs> Bethel Township does okay. have an invocation. I mean, I know I have people in my hey, family who are Buddhist. <laughs> just a second. I kind of disagree a little bit with what Brandy says. You said they're taking it out, and now they're trying to put it back into the schools. And, and it, that's, that in itself is being met with pushback, and that's only one portion of the society is pushing for that. I know, but I also mm -hmm. think it doesn't hurt to have the prayer. I know it doesn't cover everybody. If you want everybody to have a separate prayer, fine. But I don't think it hurts anything to have it. Can I, can I make a suggestion? How about you guys just leave it on there and have a silent self prayer moment? Have a Where no silent self silent, prayer, like you just keep it on there, you rename it, and then you have 35 seconds of quiet. And if you want to bow your head, you can pray to whatever God you want to pray to. Here, because here, here was my, here, here was, here, you know, in the times that I had been mayor, and and as council has changed, there's less and less people that want to do the prayer. So every meeting, it's like, well, do you want prayer? No. Do you want to do prayer? No. 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 Mr. Cook is the only one I think that really wants to do it. Um, I don't have a problem with the prayer, but I, I don't think it should also be something where it's 
it's holding up a meeting just to find someone to do the prayer. I don't have a problem with it, but if no one else wants to say it, and I'm not going to say it, um, it becomes kind of a, you know, do I, you know, I, I can't ask the administration to do it. So. Why? Why? Because you would have to ask me first, and then I can ask you guys to do it. But then that would be my decision to pass it on to you guys. Yeah, I mean, that's not my place to ask you guys to do something like that. <laughs> but they would be perfectly I'm sure they would. willing to volunteer. Some of them. Right. I do like your idea of silent prayers, and you can say it. It kind of goes into both directions. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I have a cross on my neck right now, but I don't bow my head here because I'm a firm believer in separation of church and state. Firm believer in it. Doesn't mean that in my own head I'm not doing my own thing. And that's where I came in the idea of that way you have a moment. You, uh, you, it, to me, it's a, the most respectful way. You allow someone to have a moment with whoever they choose to be and say whoever they want to say. And then it's done. You don't have to worry about finding someone to do counsel here. I mean, we can have a silent prayer on our side for whoever they want. Mr. Cobb. I want to make a motion. We just pay for this right now. Well, it would just have to die for it. Well, it's been seconded, so yeah, it's got to it's got to have a vote. So, um, Chip. Yeah, it's one in the audience, Mayor. He was okay. wanting to say something. Mr. Walters, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was. I think you were having a special meeting last week. They brought a rapper in. Yeah. And we used to do that too. That's what I was going to say. They used to bring, like, uh, Mr. Christmas would come in and but so it, on. It, to have that, find that every week, every two weeks, right. was proven week. to be difficult. Yeah. It was. And we, we did that when I first started. But it was getting tough towards the end. Yeah. I don't think it's, it, you know, I don't think anyone in this room has a problem with it being done. It's just. It's, it's such a sensitive nature. It's a, it's yeah, a, it's a, a touchy hot topic item. Chief, did you have anything you wanted to say? No, I just. Myself. As a citizen of New Carlisle, <laughs> okay, I'm in favor. I think it should be here. Okay. Any other citizens want to comment on this one? I'll let this get, if you. You're saying nobody has an issue with a display brought up, so. Obviously. Well, I mean, his issue as far as like they don't, you know. Like I said, that's my only real big issue with it. I, it's every, you know, it's, as council has evolved and changed with different people, it's, it's getting harder for me to find someone. And I don't know if it's something that you want to do every single meeting, then so be it. I have no problem with Mike, but I will say this. And probably being the oldest person in the room, I think there is a lot Nicolau needs to be prayed over for. Yes, I give my opinion. I'm out. I'm, I'm done. Okay. You can hold me to it. It's on camera. All right. Well, Miss Eggleston. Yeah. I could I could agree with a silent prayer, but New Carlisle is not made up of strictly Christian people. My sister-in-law is Buddhist. I. Yeah, there are pagan. There, I mean, there are spiritual people who are not religious, and I think <coughs> forcing a Christian prayer. I mean, it does not represent all of the citizens of the city. Mm -hmm. What if you were to try that silent prayer a couple of times? Meetings. We'll see how you break out. What do you feel? What do you feel about that? That would be fine. What well, about the motion, though? With invocation, you can say we will have a moment of silent prayer. I would think. Right. 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 Yeah. Or you can motion. have someone offer a prayer. It would be your prerogative, sir. Well, 
it's, a, it's our decision, and well, I guess we'll see how the vote turns out, and then we'll know where to go from there. Okay. So I agree. Okay, so the vote is to, to delete the invocation from our call to order. Correct? It's what? Right. Okay. <clears throat> and yes. my first was? Um, that, that's the way I? Well, yeah, the, the way I'm saying it is so deleting it. Well, it's going to delete the invocation, and then after the vote, depending on how it turns out, we could agree to rename it as, you know, whatever a we, a silent prayer, prayer silent, 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 silent. When you're ready. Okay. Uh, my second was Councilwoman Nowakowski. So, Councilman Cobb. No. Councilwoman Eggleston. No. Vice Mayor Cook. No. Mayor Lowry. Uh, no. Councilwoman Hopkins. Just for clarification, I'm voting not to take it out, right? Correct. That's, oh, that's why okay. I was taking it. I was yeah. making sure I was yeah. voting right. No. Um, Councilman Grimm. No. And Councilwoman Nowakowski. No. Okay, so that motion fails. So the invocation is staying. All right. So now, if someone would like to make a motion to change the wording of the agenda to whatever. You... I'd like to make a motion to change the wording to a moment of silent um, meditation or silent reflection. Reflection. Reflect. There we go. <coughs> okay. For our invocation. For our agenda. For our agenda. <coughs> Is there a second? Moment of silent reflection. Yeah. Okay. Second. Second one. Miss. Okay. Second was Nowakowski. All right. No. Councilman Cobb. Councilwoman Eggleston. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilman Grimm. No. And Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. All right. Motion accepted five to two. Very much. Grimm's one's passed, right? His amendment, Mr. Grimm's. Um. Yes. Okay, just want to make sure. Like, wait, that's oh yeah, it's right guys, here. Right? I, yeah, it is right here. I'm sorry. Are you caught up, Ms. Burner? I think so. So we are now back to voting on the original okay. rules of council of 20-01R. And okay. my. First was Cobb, my second was Eggleston, Vice Mayor. Yes. <laughs> Mayor Lowry. Is there a little anger behind that? <laughs> <laughs> a little stress? Yes. yes. Councilwoman Hopkins. <coughs> yes. Councilman Grimm. No. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. <coughs> Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That motion is accepted six to one. All right, thank you very much. And then two ordinances when you are ready, please. All right, just a second here. All right, our ordinances this evening, we have two intro, zero action. Ordinance 2020-01, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 3rd, 2020. And ordinance amending section 246.09 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding employee benefits. Ordinance 2020-02, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 3rd, 2020. And ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the city's collective bargaining unit. Thank you very much. And before we drop to other business, or we can do it on other business, really it doesn't matter. Um, we discussed in the work session the um, possible purchase of refurbished iPads for council to switch over to if they wanted. Uh, we discussed that. Um, that was something you were going to need a, a vote on tonight, correct? Please. Okay. Um, just for those of you, uh, government bodies, 
school boards, they're all moving to it. And you guys see the packets we have. This is a fairly thin one actually tonight, but um, if this passes, the reason behind it is, is you know, to save you know, manpower, hours, labor, with him putting these packets together every day. Uh, I, I think, me personally, I think would just simplify things. Um, but uh, if council does want to move forward with that, we would need a motion to vote on it. So moved. Second. And Mr. Bridge, did you want to go over anything on this? I can definitely rehash it for regular session, but it, they are actually refurbished uh, <coughs> second generation iPads. I bought myself this exact same one about three months ago. Uh, this one is actually uh, recertified directly from Apple, so they're going to take it, they'll fix the device, put a new actually hard cover on it, ship it out in a new box, it's like it's brand new getting to you. Uh, they're $829 a piece. 12.9-inch uh, screen, iPad Pro, that's a Wi-Fi and cellular connection. What that cellular connection is going to allow the council members to do is when they come into the shelter house and if they have a data plan, they can use their data plan to actually power the iPad for as if they need to get on the internet or even check their email. So. Uh, that'll save some money so we don't have to get a wireless pro, uh, plan actually dedicated to the shelter house. So uh, seven of those would be around uh, $5,703. Thank you. And I don't think, I mean, I know that it'll have that capability, but I can't think of too many times since I've been on the council that I've needed to get internet access. I mean, I know you've done it a couple of times. Yeah, if I need to look up a couple of <laughs> It's been few and far between. Yeah, it's a few and far between. Yeah, between, so. and far between. Mm -hmm. council but I'm going to start using my MacBook for this. I'm not going to bring hard paper anymore if everyone else is doing it. So. Yeah, yeah. The council, any discussion on this before she calls for the vote? I've, I've got a question on the numbers. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't it be 5803? I don't know. I probably I did it real quick in my head. <laughs> I, I mean, this number here. You know, all you got to do is take the 622372, take the tax off. So if I, yeah, it should be because that 12 should have come at 8. Right. So that should be 5803. Thank you. Anybody else before we vote? Anyone can change that on their thing so it don't look like a guy who can't do basic math and be great. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in the Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lauer. Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Motion accepted six to one. Thank you very much, ma'am. And down to other business, if you will. I'm going to read that. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. The intergovernmental meeting will take place on Monday, January 27th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. All right, thank you very much. And down to, um, well, we got, you don't, you don't want to go, so we'll, we'll just go down the line. So, Ms. Nowakowski. Um, I don't know how many of you have spent much time in the codified ordinances, but our codified ordinances are a mess. And um, I've been talking, and it is common for other organizations such as ours when we have these messes to hire someone to clean it up. And I think that we need to investigate that because I've spent way too much time in the last year and a half or two years in our codified ordinances and they are unmanageable. Are you talking about the charter? No, the, the ordinances. codified ordinances. Okay. <laughs> Charters this, codified ordinances. No, I know. <laughs> okay. Would you? I mean, when people add ordinances over the years, it, it loses any organization and it gets tacked on and finding anything in it is horrible. Okay. Mr. Bridge. The city's kind of long overdue. Um, we have a lot of municipalities or villages, township, they'll hire a company and they'll come in and do a code rewrite. Um, I think with New Carl Weil, and I'm, don't quote me on this, but I, when they got their codifieds and 
back in the day. They took a little bit from here, a little bit from there, a little bit from there, a little bit from there, and said, all right, this works. Well, what it does is we have multiple places where it actually contradicts itself. And a lot of that happens within the planning and zoning code, your, your exterior property maintenance. You know, one section says you can't have any outdoor stores in display, basically storage that you put outside your house. The other section says you can unless it's behind a privacy fence. Well, okay. So now I have my discretion about what code I want to violate. So there are sections of it that are kind of segmented, you know? Uh, but the, we are overdue to have someone come and use to put out a request for proposal. They come and they look at your codes from top to bottom. And a lot of the municipalities are doing it right now. They take your once code. It, the code is written from a legal standpoint. So if you don't have any expertise with reading law, it's gonna be tough. I mean, you could do keyword search and different kinds of search methods, but unless you know how to do research, specific type of research, you're still gonna have a hard time. So for the common person to get on there, it can be tough. Um, and I have talked to Ms. Eggleston about this particular uh, issue. Um, it's something that I think is the, the seed's been planted when we do our budget discussions. Let's talk about that. In the meantime, then I can, I mean, we'll we definitely have to put something out there for quotes. I mean, we're gonna have to get that, that done too. Uh, but she's right in some, some, some very important aspects of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Grimm, your turn. Well, this is not as earth shaking as that. I'm sorry. But yeah. <laughs> something that I thought of when we were discussing earlier in the work session about uh, the Madison School. We toured, you were there, Chief Trustee was there with Dave McWhorter a few years back. Um, there are a bunch of bicycles. Yeah. How did they get there? That's from the police when they find them and no one claims them. FYI has right. a program where they take old bicycles, refurbish them, and give them to uh, kids who don't have a bicycle. Mm -hmm. Can we do that, take them down to FYI? Um, or they can be earmarked to go to a kid from New Carlisle? Then absolutely. Yeah. But it would have to be, I'm assuming those bikes were confiscated from the city <coughs> limits. Right. <clears throat> so we would just have to make sure that goes back into someone in New Carlisle, not some from Springfield, to get one of our bikes. That would be my only concern with it. Do we need a motion to that effect? Mm -hmm. or no, no. We, we can take care of it. Since yeah. he has a key? City has a key. Pardon? The city has a key. But we have a key to it, yes, mm -hmm. to that one back door. So we just need to basically line up a time frame for somebody to take them down there. Mm -hmm. okay. I want to learn a little bit more about the program. I'll get with FYI, but yeah, that's something I can facilitate. Mm -hmm. Mr. Grimm? Chief. I would just advise anybody going in that building to wear a mask. A hard hat. <laughs> mask, and yeah, hard hat, true, and I would wear a mask. They're right inside the front. Is that I the front would door? Still, I would still wear a mask. We put it this way. We were using the building for training for several years. Now I will, I will not allow my people in the building for training. We stopped giving tours, and the chief trustee gave me the recommendation of not just let anyone in there, so yeah, we I stopped the ghost tours and everything. It's getting bad. I think he condemned it right after that, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that tour we had. The building. Yeah, I think it was the time good. he came to me and said, don't let a Wilson in there. I think it it's, was. The building has deteriorated drastically. Mm -hmm. okay. You good, Mr. Jim? I'm good. Thank you, sir. Anything? Mr. Cook. I have nothing else. I've been here long enough. All right, Ms. Eagles. Oh, I'm going to be here longer. <laughs> brought to my attention that HGTV is um, doing a little thing where you can nominate your town and they come in and take over and make over an entire town. We meet all the criteria. Um, population is less than 40,000. We have homes with great architecture. We have a main street that needs a facelift, and we have history. Uh, Ms. Nowkowski has talked to Dave McWhorter about it, and he is extremely interested in helping us do something. We just need to submit a video to HG, HGTV. Okay. To nominate new file for a makeover. What's the requirement like? Is it got to be like a, a time, like 30 seconds or less? Or? No. Okay. Okay. Here was official submission. 
I didn't but see anything. But the one thing I'm wondering time. is, you know, places are run by individuals, and would they be open to that? I mean, there's only one building on Main Street that's owned by the city. They're going to renovate, pay to renovate that all day long. They can pay to renovate my building anytime. <laughs> Uh, and I, I'm sure there's going to be discussion, you know, and how it, how it gets done. They're not going to come in and say, this is what we are going to do. They're going to talk, talk through this. They don't know that. These are TV producers. They're probably coming in, but like, yeah, we're doing that, that, and that. I mean, I don't, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't know how it's going to work. It's definitely interesting. It wouldn't hurt to try. No, no. it's awesome. No. I mean, you know, if we can get somebody that'll come in and give Main Street a facelift and it's not cost us. I mean, I mean, with the new old, old new city building, maybe they can restore the outside brick. to what? The brick? Yeah. Hey, with these things, someone's got it. Some, someone's got to win. Mm -hmm. and you're not going to put your name in the hat if you don't put your name in the hat. Yeah. Um, I say, I say go only, for it. The only thing is, is it's got to be submitted by February 7th. So we need to come up with somebody that can, I mean, Dave has offered to walk around and give the history. I think with the history, you know, the fact that we're 220 years old and we've got the old bank with the Dillinger plaque, we've got General Funston was born here. I mean, Randy Bridge works here. Randy Bridge works that here. That guy? I mean, and Don't tell him that. <laughs> Chief uh, Tecumseh? Yeah, I, th no. No, I, think that I can get with Dave because I was supposed to meet with him here soon to do a, mm -hmm. a video with him anyway, so we can maybe do something. Yeah. This yeah, I just weekend. think that, I mean, what can it hurt? Yeah. This was brought up by one of our new citizens in town. And she posted it up and asked if anybody was interested in it. Awesome. I'm curious to see how it works out from a legal perspective. Because if we go out and shoot this video, say, ah, this building's done, but the building's going to be like, wait a minute, it's my building. Right. You know, so <laughs> that, that, that'd be interesting seeing how they kind of uh, uh, work it out. But, I mean, hopefully they've done it before, but if not, I guess they'll figure it out. I wonder if you put somebody's building in the video, mm -hmm. you'd have to get them to sign a waiver. No, no, it's not like a per. I mean, I don't. How, if you were yeah. filming well, from the public yeah, right away. Right. Yeah, if it's just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. okay. You can take pictures of anything in the public arena. All right. Anything else before we drop down to the next section? All right. So uh, tonight, uh, other business. That is it. We will move into an executive session. Uh, after the council meeting to consider the employment of a public employee and then after we come out of that I don't foresee any business correct mm. sir you had no nothing okay so all right well if I said I need a motion to go into an executive session so moved second yeah five minute recess yeah five minutes so all right we're we take five.